Hey guys, and welcome to the session covering the MyPy package. This is a really interesting package that I tend to use with my regular linting. And in this video, I wanna cover its general usage and go over the following areas here. These are the things which I think, if you're new to MyPy or haven't used it before, the things that I think you'll find most useful and hopefully most interesting. We'll quickly cover what MyPy does. We'll then look at the difference between dynamic and static time checking. We'll then look at how to check modules, packages, and then if you need to, how to exclude certain files. We'll also take a look at how to configure MyPy using its own configuration file as well. So first things first, what does MyPy actually do? Uh, I suppose we can cover this as well here in this section. So given these two functions, we have add numbers and add numbers of E2. This guy here doesn't have any kind of type checking. So you notice here, we're just saying A and B. Notice how even by just hovering over it, it says parameter A is any, whereas if I do it here, we're saying parameter A is an integer. So this one has its types checked. This is like the statically typed function, so to speak. This one here is dynamic. We're not giving this function any kind of indication as to what A and B actually are, whereas in this case, we are. And what MyPy will basically do is it will look for any functions such as this. So with this one here, we have statically typed this one. We've said, take in an integer, an integer, give back an integer, MyPy is going to look for any calls to this function, which might kind of go against what A and B should be. So in this case here, we're giving them integers, that's fine. However, MyPy will look for all calls and anything that kind of contradicts what these type in should be, MyPy is going to tell you off for it. Now, there's a few benefits to this. Suppose you're working with some kind of old legacy code and it's like, you know, a couple of hundred lines, maybe it's like a giant package. You might want to run MyPy through all of this and just check that all the functions are being called as they should be with the correct type hints. Uh, one thing I use it for really is just for kind of peace of mind. So if I'm using the rough linter, I'll also use MyPy as well, especially for my more larger programs. It just gives you that sort of second set of eyes over your code to make sure that your type hints actually match what's happening down below, which is good. So kind of see it as like someone looking over your shoulder. It's a second set of eyes. It's a nice way to validate your function. And if you're doing linting anyway, you may as well just add in an additional smaller step by literally just saying like MyPy package, check it all comes green, and then you're good to go. And then if you get any errors, that might be a nice place to stop. Go back, revisit how you're calling your functions or methods, make some alterations, and then come back and check again. Especially if you're working in the industry as well. If you're working in an environment where you're sharing code with other people, it can be quite good just to kind of sanity check your code before submitting it into Git or whatever. So let's go into how it works. So I've got MyPy already installed. If you didn't, you would just do pip install MyPy. Uh, if yours isn't installed, yours will look a bit different. Mine already is, that's fine. And what it will do, it will look for any function that's been written like this, okay? So let's suppose I then did MyPy and simply pass in the name of the module, there we go. Okay, no issues found in one source file. That's because we've said A and B is an int, give back an int, and yet we've given this an int, it's absolutely fine. It isn't going to check this one because we haven't passed in any types, which means, let's see, suppose I changed five to the string five, even though this is wrong, like if, you know, if we did Python free, my pi, there we go. Even though this makes the code break, MyPy isn't really concerned with that because we've not given the function any information about what A and B actually are. So I guess that's a good argument as to why you should do type hints. Uh, so MyPy can actually pick up on any errors like that in the first place. But given this one here, um, let's just try something. Let's change five to a five like this. We can then run MyPy through our code. And there we go here. So argument one to add numbers. So argument one is this guy. Has incompatible type string. We expected an integer. And that's MyPy just doing its job. So in a nutshell, that's really all MyPy is doing. So we've covered this, we've covered dynamic versus static. So one more time, dynamic is just this here. We're not declaring any types for A, B, args, or your return value. Anything that's statically typed is this here. We're declaring when we write the function, what our input should be and what our return types should be as well. And that's where MyPy really comes into its element. If you've got a full module or package with everything statically typed, MyPy can get to work, it can check that whole module for you, and it just makes your code a bit safer, a bit more secure, and I guess, yeah, you could say it's kind of like sanity checking your code along with your linting. 
Okay, now let's take a look at checking packages. Uh, now in a previous video, I've done a full fast API tutorial and this is gonna be my target because I've not done any MyPy checking on it as of yet. Uh, so if I close this, uh, you can see the whole app is here. So there's a couple of little bits. There's this add to csv.py. Uh, we've got some roots in here as well. So there's a fair few things that could be checked. So just to show you where I am, if I ls, I'm inside my app here. Now previously we did mypy and then did mypytutorial.py to check this specific module. To check a package, it's really quite simple. We simply do mypy and then just do my app like this. And because this is a folder containing lots of Python files, we hit run and there we go. And straight away we get a few interesting things. Now I was sort of expecting to get these for pandas and fastapi. And now what it's basically saying is that the library stubs are not installed. So what I've done, and I'm slyly on the side, is I've just got this here. Now you may not have heard of stubs. It's quite a, I mean, it's not a very super common thing that you're gonna be creating on your own. A stub file basically looks like this. Notice how it's got like .pyo, and this is for kind of a made up module here. Basically it's a file that looks like this, and it explains all of the type hints for any kind of like classes, functions, methods, etc. So I suppose we had a module called, you know, calculator, and it had all these methods in here. You could create this alongside it to basically say all these methods take in this here's what they should be all these methods give back xyz so on and so forth so basically it's kind of like a way to do your type annotations off to one side and basically my pie is complaining that this isn't here for pandas and fast api so what it suggests we do is either run it for a specific library or we can do my pie install types and i'd be interested to see if this works so we'll hit run uh, let's run this. Okay, that seems happy. Uh, let's go ahead and run this again. So in this case, the issue for pandas is gone, but this is still giving me one for fast API. So if I look at where it's happening, it's my app roots, and inside roots we can see submit scores py2. Uh, it's going to look at py2, and it's basically complaining about this here. So of course, pydantic must be okay because my pi isn't too fussed about that. But this guy here, MyPy, is not too happy about that. So in this case, what I would probably do is have to try and go off and find the stubs myself, uh, which can be a bit troublesome. Or what you can do is actually ask MyPy to ignore certain things. The best way of doing that, in my opinion, is via like a config file for MyPy. So we can do that up next. But in general, whenever you see an error about missing stubs, you can generally run that command I just did here. So if I run up for a second. It's this guy here, MyPy install types. MyPy will then try and figure out where the stubbers are for those given libraries, and it should sort it out for you. But this is good because this gives us a real life scenario of something that might happen. So let's take a look at a config file to see how we can now tell MyPy not to worry about this. And in the same directory as my app, I've now put my mypy.ini file. Basically what you do is rather than saying mypy, my package or my module, whatever, you define that at the top under files here. Then we have a different kind of range of booleans of which can be true or false. Now, because I've got this all in true, I've actually made this quite strict, which is good or, or bad, depending on how you see it. And one thing I've done that's quite interesting here is I've done this at the bottom. So recall that in the previous example, MyPy wasn't happy that certain things are missing from FastAPI. So this is like a little exception at the bottom, basically just to say, kind of ignore this from FastAPI. I'm aware of the problem. One thing that is nice as well is that MyPy can generate a HTML report and we can do this here as well. So it'll give a nice report in the same folder called MyPy report. And now all we've got to do is invoke the command, but we'll point the command to our configuration file. So we can say mypy, you then do dash dash config file, and then just make sure you get it right. We now do mypy.ini. And now we have some errors because it's running in a fairly strict mode. Processing add to CSV line six. Let's go take a look. Go my app, my app, processing add to CSV line six. Aha, there's no return statement to this here, which is interesting. Uh, let's see what this is returning. This is returning none. So we can simply say none in here. Okay, hopefully that satisfies my pie. Let's run that again. So our next error is in reference to this here, line 14, untyped decorator. So let's see where this is coming from. This is coming from router, API router. Again, that's coming from fast API. So something we're importing doesn't have a type assigned to it. Uh, so not ideal, so, but what we can do, I believe we've done this inside our any here. So this disallow untyped decorator set to true. For this case here, I'm happy what this function is doing, so I'm going to set this to false. And this is returning a 
dictionary. Let's do this here, make sure that the function actually says it. Run this again, you should see this go away now. And we are down to one error, missing type parameters for generic type dict. Uh, where is that? Submit scores, line 15 in roots here. So line 15, ah, uh, this is in relation to this. So what this is saying is, because this is just a generic kind of dict here, it's not kind of saying, well, what are the keys and what are the values? So to negate this one, I would do from typing, uh, let's go ahead and import dictionary. And this is probably complaining because I've not said what's in the dictionary. So generally what you do is kind of something like this here. So you do like dict and then specify the types. So the key looks like a string and the value also looks like a string as well. So if we move this back to here, put this there like that. Let's hope my pie is now happy with this one takes a second and yeah it looks good it's nice and happy of that so I guess the only thing we had to do there which I guess isn't completely perfect is tell MyPy not to worry about this but those are just kind of like the pros and cons of working with MyPy I guess um, you could do some additional work here to make this happy make this satisfied but in my case I'm fairly happy with the way I've done this we know what this endpoint is taking we know what this endpoint is returning back so I'm fine um, let's go back here a second I'm going to click down to here. So we said that my Pi report should contain a HTML report. If I come outside of my app, look inside here, we've now got a HTML file with our report. Now looking at this HTML, we get a range of different things here. Now what this imprecise bit means, these are effectively lines. So this is saying 31.58% of this file, if I click on this, basically my Pi is not happy with. So in this case here, it said it's not happy about these lines, ones in red. It's happy with these, it's happy with this, it's happy with that. Uh, if I go back for a second, look at one that it is happy with. This is one where my Pi is completely happy with the typing, which is quite interesting. And in general, I try and get these as close to I possibly can to zero. But I think where I generally struggle with this is when I'm using a lot of kind of third party libraries. And of course, this code is by no means perfect. I'm actually building on this in my fast API series. So one of the last videos in the series is going to be going through this and being as stringent as possible to make sure that all the typing is accounted for. But I guess you're seeing this in kind of like a real world scenario where kind of nothing is perfect which is good so what I would be trying to do in this case is trying to get this as low as I possibly can ideally zero but you're seeing this from like my point of view for the first time so guys I hope that was helpful we've briefly covered what my pie does we've taken a look from kind of like a real world example on an ongoing project which is by no means perfect we've taken a look at how to exclude certain files as well so we told it to exclude fast API from some of its checks we looked at a configuration file via the use of an ini file here, which kind of tells MyPy how to behave, what to ignore, and then what to be really strict about. And we've taken a brief look at dynamic versus static type checking. Um, I'm going to be doing a video later on in the future about how to include this in a full kind of working pipeline. So including things like rough and tox and also sticking this in there as well. Cheers for watching, guys. Any suggestions for future videos, feel free to ping us a message. Thanks, guys, and have a great week.